hey, if you're looking to launch or expand an existing brewery and you need some capital to do that, you might be going to potential investors or maybe going to the bank and talking about an SBA loan perhaps. And maybe your investor lender has asked you for a set of financial projections in that process. Now you're kind of at that point of trying to figure out how do I put these projections together in a format that makes sense for a brewery specifically and, and in a way that an uh, investor or lender is going to like. Uh, well, you've come to the right place because we have put together a brewery financial projection template. Um, this is actually our most popular template and uh, has been used by hundreds of breweries over the last several years. And um, we have just released a new version here that I'm going to walk you through today. Uh, my name is Adam Hooksma. I'm the co-founder of Projection Hub. And over the last decade, we've helped thousands of entrepreneurs create financial projections for investors and lenders. And so uh, the template I'm working on today is our brewery template, and we've linked to that in the description of the video below. Uh, but what I want to do now is just walk you through how to fill this out and how it's going to work for you. So the first thing I want to show you here is kind of starting at the end. Um, this is the at a glance tab where you can see uh, our profit and loss at a glance and some other key data points um, that it's going to be useful to you so you can see like how many units of your high cost your average or your low cost beer um, your wholesale numbers uh, your uh, tap room beer revenue versus uh, food and outside drink revenue so lots of key um, kpis and numbers that are relevant for your brewery you'll also be able to see um, some graphs some startup use of funds a table here um, that will show you your uh, total funds required to start based on your plan and and how those funds will be used. You can see a break even and some monthly sales forecast number. So um, in addition to that, you're going to get your standard uh, income statement. Project, so a projected income statement for five years, a five year projected balance sheet and a five year projected cash flow statement. I'll just kind of show you those here. And then we're also going to get a monthly income statement. So if you need a monthly detail, a monthly income statement, monthly cash flow, and monthly balance sheet for each of the five years. So that's kind of what you get at, through, through going through this process. Um, we're going to jump back to the beginning here and show you, you know, what we need to do to get there. Uh, so first thing you need to know is that any tab or any cell that is highlighted in light blue is an assumption cell that you can change the data in there without breaking anything in the in the spreadsheet. So you're going to go ahead and put in your information, you know, name of your brewery. So how much um, investment is going to go into the project? Is so that your personal investment, or maybe you could put in other investors here as well? There's some slots to put in that. And then here's your fixed asset. So. Um, you know, are you leasing the brewery space or tap room space, or did you buy the building? If you're buying the building, um, you could put in the building itself here as an asset as well. In this example, we're saying that um, we're just leasing the space, but we had to do significant renovations and, and get it ready, um, you know, to operate as a brewery. And so we have $300,000 put into leasehold improvements, We've got $175,000 in brewing equipment, $50,000 in kitchen equipment. 60,000 furniture for the for the brewery and tap room, for example, and 5,000 glassware. Now we've got uh, a $500,000 SBA loan that we're estimating here. And um, that, that'll that have us jump over here to our input revenue tab. So um, you can select some different options here. I'm going to um, be working off the option here of a combined tap room and restaurant model. Now you could do a tap room only um, or a restaurant only, for example, but um, we're working on um, this, this brewery model with a combined tap room and restaurant right now. So the first thing you can do is we're, we're going to get to uh, what, it, you know, what it costs to produce in order to get to the revenue. We kind of start with um, the production. What do you even have to sell in the first place? Let me zoom in just a little bit here. So we can see um, different ingredients here that you're going to need and what the cost, the barrel production cost will be for, um, we kind of give you three categories of high cost beer, average cost, and low cost beer. 
And um, then next thing we look at is, you know, how is this uh, held in containers? So what kind of container types are you using? You know, barrels or kegs, um, cartons, or are you bottling it? And um, so you have the ability to put in the cost for that bottling cost and, and the size in gallons. And by the way, we also have a metric version of this template as well. So if you buy, end up buying the template, um, you'll get access to both the, the gallons and the metric uh, version as well. And so then now, now that we've kind of got the production handled here, um, what we're gonna do is look at the number of seats in the tap room and restaurant. So we've got 120 seat capacity here with, um, we're saying our average visit length is 90 minutes. We said we're open 50 hours per week. And we're gonna say that we're here, we can fill out our capacity that we're actually filled. So um, yeah, we have 120 seats, but those 120 seats aren't gonna be open or filled all the time, right? So we're saying on average here, you know, 35% by month six, we're 35% we're filled. Now that's, um, all open hours, right? So you might have some hours where you're 100% at capacity, but you have, certainly will have some other hours where you're you're not. And so that's the number you want to put in here. And once you fill that out, you're you're going to be able to see um, the number of um, tables served, number of customers served here um, per month. And then we also have takeout orders per day. So you have the ability to add in takeout orders as well. And now we're going to um, talk about the, the tap room and restaurant menu here. So you can have, again, are you serving out of barrels? Are you serving out of bottles? Are you ser serving out of kegs? And, um, and then down here we can see, okay, we figured out we're gonna have you know 1,700 uh, customer visits per month, and or per party, and then we're projecting here what number of each of these beers will the average party buy. So we're saying on average um, they'll buy you know half of a high cost beer, half of an average, half of a low cost beer. And the, these are the house beers, but let's say you also have, um, you may have some other outside um, beer options as well, perhaps. Um, so if that's the case, you have the ability to put in also wine or cocktail options as well. And again, you're putting in the number uh, that you think a party will will purchase per per party. Now we've got the ability to add in food as well. So you could have appetizers or you could put in more, you know, um, you know, maybe you have pizza, maybe you have burgers, you know, you can add in more items here as well. And all of that's going to help you project your um, tap room and restaurant uh, alcohol sales as well as food sales as well. You can kind of see as I scroll down now, we're gonna look at wholesale. So you have the ability to add wholesale um, revenue as well. And you're gonna be projecting how many units of these different types um, are you selling wholesale each month? As well as the price per unit, I skipped that, the price per unit um, for the different, different types here. And all of that's gonna come down here and to give you your uh, total revenue from all the different sources. Um, and next thing we're going to do is jump into our direct labor. So this would be for the tap room and restaurant labor costs. You can add in servers, chefs, you know, hosts, and other staff here. Maybe you know dishes and and you know, cleaning the tables and that sort of thing. Um, and so you'll add in the number of those staff that you'll need, as well as the um, uh, average pay rate for those positions. On the input other expenses tab, you'll be able to see that you can add in a number of different expenses here. We've got some pre-populated, but um, there's space to add in a lot more um, for your specific situation. Where the one thing I wanna point out here is that you can um, select an expense as either a fixed dollar amount or a percentage of total revenue. 
or even a percentage of a specific type of revenue. So for example, we have credit card fees. We're saying our 2% of total revenue, um, we're assuming will be uh, a credit card fee expense. Now, just as another example, let's say you're doing uh, a lot of uh, takeout, maybe you're using DoorDash or something to, to handle uh, takeout. Maybe they charge a percentage uh, transaction fee or percentage of revenue as a transaction fee. You could, you could do that, but you'd want to say, um, you know, uh, food and outside drink revenue um, instead of the house beer revenue, for example, if you're looking at that. All right. We're going to jump over to our input and salaries and owner's draw tab. <clears throat> So you can add in uh, individual salaried positions here that are different than the hourly staff that we already entered on the previous tab. And we can put in what month that they start. So for example, let's say you um, you think you know, you're know going to start with one manager, but you could have another shift manager or something that um, isn't going to start. Or maybe even you're doing the brewing yourself, but maybe in month 13, you're going to add add another brewer. brewer. Um, so you'd be able to put the month started here as month 13, and that would bring on that salary position in the projections during that month. So here you can pick the, select the number of that particular type of employee. So I have this pre-entered as two. So I'm assuming maybe we've got um, two co-managers here to manage the bar. Um, you, you know, need more than one because uh, maybe it's too many hours to be open to have one manager um, handle all of the hours. So we've got two different managers that are co-managing the bar here. Um, that's not necessarily a recommendation, just showing you as an example that you can add in multiples of a particular type of employee. All right, that brings us all the way back to where we started on the profit and loss uh, at a glance. And, um, so the, the one thing I wanted to mention here is that uh, there is a lot of detail here and for every particular um, brewery concept, you know, things might be slightly different. So we do have a CPA on staff uh, who built this template and is also available to uh, help uh, either answer questions or help you even customize the template if you need to uh, for your specific situation. So uh, feel free to reach out to us. Um, if you have questions just about how to fill the template out or if it's a good fit for your specific model, um, reach out in the comment section of the YouTube video below and we follow up with you that way. Uh, or you can reach us at support at projectionhub.com. All right, best of luck. Thanks. <laughs>